Before I begin, I want to discuss something serious. Marijuana overdoses kill over 15 billion people every single month. That means there are almost like a trillion marijuana overdoses every year. I myself have lost at least 500 cousins to the nefarious plant. So be a hero. Take a stand against the devil's lettuce by purchasing some of my marijuana overdose awareness merchandise. The link is in the bio to the video. Thank you and God bless you. San Fran versus Seattle. The 49ers, led by generic white quarterback number 13, and and a dominant defense wasted little time going into Seattle and making some noise. Shout out to grunge music. On San Fran's second drive of the game, they marched 86 yards to go up 7-0 on a George Kittle touchdown. There were a bunch of boring-ass punts before Seattle tacked on a field goal to make it 7-3, but a fumble by Seattle just before halftime set up San Fran with a Brady in six-yard touchdown drive. Capped off by a score with first one in, last one out, Christian McCaffrey to go up 14-3. The game essentially ended early in the second half, once not Jimmy Garoppolo, found Kittle for a 54-yard score to go up 21-3. The rest of the game was San Fran playing ball control offensively and making Geno Smith's life hell defensively. Geno's play has dropped off lately, and he was a checkdown merchant in this one. There was temporary hope for Seattle when San Fran missed a field goal and Geno led a touchdown drive to make it 21-13 with 3.39 left, but San Fran converted two third downs, including a 55-yard run by Jordan Mason to seal the win and the NFC West. I miss Jimmy. Minnesota versus Indianapolis. The Matt Ryan Hall of Fame debate will be heated and fascinating. Let's focus on this game first, though. On Indianapolis' opening drive, they had first and goal at Minnesota's four-yard line, but they settled for a field goal instead of a touchdown to go up 3-0. Then, after going up 17-0 thanks to a blocked punt return score and Indy's only offensive touchdown drive of the day, Indy got two straight drives starting on Minnesota's 31-yard line, but again settled for field goals instead of touchdowns both times to go up 23-0. A pick six then gave Indy a third to nothing lead, and then Indy settled again for a field goal to go up 33 to nothing when they had first and 10 at Minnesota's 16 yard line with two minutes left. Look, nobody's going to complain about having a 33 to nothing halftime lead, but it could have and should have been more like a 42 to nothing or 45 to nothing lead. Indianapolis had the ball up 33 to nothing early in third, but punted. Minnesota finally got on the board with a touchdown, and Indy responded with a field goal to go up 36 7 with five minutes left in the third. From that moment on, Indy had seven more drives in the game. Those seven and drives finished with zero points, five punts, a fumble, and a turnover on downs. All the while, Minnesota kept trimming the lead with scores until they eventually tied the game at 36 with two minutes left. Yes, Indy's defense was bad in the second half, but if Matt Ryan had been able to lead his team to just three points over the last seven drives of the game, Indianapolis would have won. Don't forget, Ryan's offense actually scored just 22 points on 15 drives in this game, which is not good. There are plenty of examples throughout Ryan's career of him playing well and his defense blowing it for him, but he did not play well here. And now he'll forever be known as the quarterback who led the worst collapse in regular season and Super Bowl history. If he had a ring, this wouldn't matter for his Hall of Fame chances, but he doesn't. The guy just sucks at finishing off opponents, and sorry to say, it will keep him out of the Hall of Fame. As for Minnesota, they are 11-3 with a plus two point differential. The luck will run out eventually. Cleveland versus Baltimore. I hate reviewing low scoring games like this with a passion, but I still do it because I'm a fucking hero who loves his fans. Let's get to the pivotal moments of this shit game. No offense to soccer. In the first quarter, Baltimore went for it on fourth and one at Cleveland seven, but famously responsible tweeter Patrick Ricard got stuffed and it resulted in zero points. Groper Cleveland then led a nearly eight minute long field goal drive to go up three nothing early in the second. A few drives later, terrible quarterback Tyler Huntley managed to lead Baltimore to a field goal to tie the game. On Cleveland's ensuing drive, they had first and goal of Baltimore's four, but for once, Watson couldn't finish, and they kicked the field goal to go up 6-3. Justin Tucker then missed a 48-yard field goal as the first half expired, signaling the end of the world. Huntley threw an interception deep in Cleveland territory, then Watson led the only touchdown drive of the game to go up 13-3 late in the third. Baltimore's last four drives ended with a fumble, a blocked field goal, and two turnover on downs, and Baltimore better fucking hope Lamar gets back as soon as possible because they suck without him. Watson has been terrible so far in three starts, and I genuinely hope it stays that way the rest of his career. Buffalo versus Miami. This was a genuinely fun and exciting game to watch, and it made me temporarily forget how pathetic my life is for about five minutes. Both teams punted on their opening drives, but it was pedal to the metal after that. Buffalo took a 7-3 lead after one on a Josh Allen touchdown. Buffalo then had a 14-6 lead after another Allen touchdown pass. Miami countered with a touchdown run to make it 14-13. Then, on the final play of the first half, Allen made an alien superhuman play for a touchdown to give Buffalo 
Buffalo a 21-13 halftime lead. Allen is going to get so many shitty college quarterbacks with huge arms paid millions of dollars. Looking at you, Will Levis and Anthony Richardson. Miami was done fucking around, though. In the third quarter, Tua fired off touchdown passes to Jalen Waddell and Boys and Girls Clubs of America ambassador Tyreek Hill to go up 26-21 after three. An Allen fumble set up Miami with a field goal to give them a 29-21 lead with 12 minutes left. Allen then turned into a human polar bear, breaking off a 44-yard run, and then a few plays later found Dawson Knox for a touchdown. Allen ran in a two-point conversion to tie the game at 29 with nine minutes left. Miami's final drive started off promising but sputtered out around Buffalo's 40-yard line. They punted and set up Allen with 93 yards to go with six minutes left. On the final drive, Allen overcame a second and 18, converted three third downs, the last being a defensive pass interference with 50 seconds left to set up the game-winning 25-yard field goal as time expired to win 32-29 to remain the one seed in the AFC and all but clinch the AFC East. God, isn't it just great the Bills didn't decide to become great again until Tom Brady left the division? It's just so amazing. New Orleans versus Atlanta. A great battle between two teams on Tom Brady's payroll to make sure he wins the NFC South no matter how awful he plays. Atlanta discarded Marcus Mariota like a used condom for unproven rookie Desmond Ritter. Ritter's first start was, well, you'll see. New Orleans began the game with back-to-back -to -back touchdown passes to go up 14-0 while Ritter's offense could only muster three points on five first-half drives. But thanks to Ritter's amazing handoffs to Cordero Patterson and Tyler Algier, Atlanta was able to cut the lead to 14-10 with an Algier touchdown run. But the soulless Andy Dalton laughed and immediately responded with a long touchdown drive of his own, finding Juwan Johnson for the second time in this game to go up 21-10 late in the third. Atlanta had a five-minute long drive end in a punt, but a shitty punt by New Orleans in return set up Atlanta with a short field at the New Orleans 32. They would capitalize by having Ritter not throw at all. It ended with a Patterson touchdown run and Algier two-point conversion run to make it 21-18 with seven minutes left. New Orleans went three and out, giving Atlanta a prime chance to tie or take the lead. Ritter actually made some nice throws on the final drive, but on fourth and five at midfield with about two minutes left, Ritter's pass to Drake London was fumbled and recovered by the Saints. The Saints then drained all but 12 seconds, and the game would end with Ritter hilariously running out of bounds for no reason instead of putting up a Hail Mary. The NFC South, everybody. Pittsburgh versus Carolina. Carolina entered this game with a chance to take first place in the NFC South from Tom Brady with a win. But like so many times over the last 22 years, the Pittsburgh Steelers swooped in to save Brady. Pittsburgh had just one drive in the first quarter, and it ended with a Najee Harris touchdown to go up 7-0. Carolina would respond with a Sam Darnold touchdown pass to tie it at 7, but that was Carolina's only first half points on five drives. A Jalen Warren touchdown put Pittsburgh up 14-7 at halftime. Pittsburgh then had a near 12-minute long touchdown drive, capped off by Mitch Trubisky diving across the goal line like there were titties on the other side waiting for him to kiss, to give Pittsburgh Pittsburgh a 21-7 lead after three. Carolina had first and 10 at Pittsburgh's 12, but settled for a field goal to make it 21-10. After forcing a punt, Carolina had first and goal at Pittsburgh's four-yard line, but again had to settle for a field goal to make it 21-13. A 13-play, five-minute long field goal drive by Pitt to go up 24-13 essentially ended the game. Carolina would add another field goal to make it an eight-point game with 19 seconds left, but the onside kick failed and the loss was secured. Settling for field goals in the red zone will almost always come back to fuck you just like the IRS. Detroit versus the Jets. After having a few weeks off to watch Mike White get murdered by defenders, Zach Wilson was forced to log out of his Match.com account and put on a uniform again. Detroit's first drive ended with the goal line stand, no offense to the France national team. But the Jets, being the Jets, immediately allowed Detroit to return a punt 47 yards for a touchdown to go up 7-0 after one. Wilson then looked like a number two overall pick a few drives later, finding CJ Uzoma for a 40-yard touchdown to tie the game. A long Detroit field goal drive followed, and the teams exchanged punts before Wilson made some more nice throws to set up a field goal to tie the game at 10 at halftime. Regression hit immediately in the second half, though, as Wilson threw an interception that Detroit scored a field goal off of to go up 13 to 10. The remainder of the third quarter was a punt orgy. Oh, yeah. Midway through the fourth, Detroit missed a field goal, and the Jets responded with another Wilson touchdown pass to go up 17 13 with 441 left. But the Jets are still the Jets, as on fourth down, they allowed a 51-yard touchdown on a little teeny tiny checkdown pass by Jared Goof to Brock Wright to put Detroit up 2017 with a minute 49 left. Wilson would actually make some insane throws to convert a third and 19 and a fourth and 18 on the last drive to set up a 58-yard game-tying field goal, but Wilson failed to will his kicker Greg Zerline the way Brady willed Venetary, and the Jets lost. The Lions, yes, the Detroit Lions, have a better win-loss record
record after 14 games than Tom Brady. I never thought I'd see the day. Jacksonville versus Dallas. One of the many entertaining games of the weekend. Dallas took advantage of a slow start by Jacksonville to go up 14-0 early in the second quarter. Trevor Lawrence then got in the groove and found hotel room enjoyer Zay Jones for a touchdown to make it 14-7, but Dallas answered back with a Dak touchdown to go up 21-7 at halftime. The teams exchanged field goals to make it 24-10, then a Lawrence interception set up another Dallas field goal to go up 27-10 late in the third, but Lawrence was tired of getting bitched, so he launched 59-yard touchdown to Jones, then Dakota Fanning threw an interception, and Lawrence fired another touchdown to make it 27-24 Dallas after three. A Dallas punt followed, then Lawrence and Travis Etienne led another touchdown drive capped off by Lawrence's third touchdown pass of the day to Zay Jones, and fourth touchdown pass overall to go up 31-27. But Dallas responded with a clutch seven-minute touchdown drive, ending with a Dakota touchdown pass to Noah Brown to take a 34-31 lead with three minutes left. Lawrence fumbled on Jacksonville's next drive and all looked lost, but Jacksonville's defense stiffened up, insert Viagra joke here, forcing a punt. Lawrence then set up Jacksonville with a 48-yard game-tying field goal as time expired to send the game into overtime. Jacksonville got the ball first but punted. However, Rain Dakota Prescott channeled legendary Cowboy quarterbacks Quincy Carter and Chad Hutchinson and threw a game-losing pick six. It wasn't really his fault, but who cares? The Cowgirls suck. <laughs> Philadelphia versus Chicago. A very sloppy game by both teams that was still entertaining. The first quarter was scoreless thanks to an interception by Jalen Hurts and Justin Fields taking a bunch of bad sacks, as he is one to do. Philly got on the board first with a field goal, but thanks to a couple insane plays by Fields, Chicago took a 6-3 lead on a David Montgomery touchdown. Hurts threw another interception, but Chicago couldn't capitalize on it, and Hurts would eventually break a ton of tackles on a super duper difficult 22-yard touchdown run to go up 10-6 at halftime. Another Hurts touchdown put Philly up 17-6 in the third, but a Miles Sanders fumble deep in Philly territory set up a Fields touchdown pass to make it 17-13, but then the game got sloppy. Full of punts and turnovers and even a 19-play drive by Philly that ended in a missed field goal midway through the fourth. Hell, there was even a Nathan Peterman sighting on a crucial third down, and you won't believe this, his only pass fell incomplete. Finally, thanks largely to a 68-yard bomb to A.J. Brown, Hertz ran for his third touchdown of the day and a two-point conversion to put Philly up 25-13 with 4.20 left. Fields led a touchdown largely against a soft defense to make it 25-20 with 2.43 left, but Hertz would find Brown for 12 yards on a third and six to ice the game. Hertz suffered a sprained shoulder and might miss a game or two, but God gives his toughest battles to his toughest soldiers, and right now he is trying so badly to get me to abandon this team, and I won't do it. That's what a hero does. 13-1, baby. Kansas City versus Houston. Patrick Mahomes versus the worst team in the league. Huh, that's an easy blowout win, right? No. Both teams would punt on each of their first two drives before Houston struck first with a Davis Mills touchdown pass to Tegan Quitoriano to go up 7-0 after one. But Mahomes' answer were the touchdown pass to Jarek McKinnon to tie it. Houston punted, but Kansas City fumbled deep in their own territory, setting up sneaky athlete Mills for a 17-yard touchdown run to go up 14-7. The teams exchanged punts again before Mahomes led a 97-yard touchdown drive, including a second touchdown pass of the day just before halftime to make it 14-13. Houston as Kansas City missed the extra point. KC finally got the lead early in the third on a field goal, but it was short-lived thanks to another KC fumble, this time by Juju Smith-Schuster, and Houston took advantage as Mills found Jordan Atkins to go up 21-16 after three. Mahomes ran for a score and converted a two-point conversion pass to give KC a 24-21 lead early in the fourth, before Houston responded with a 15-play field goal drive to make it 24-all with five minutes left. Mahomes set up his kicker with a game-winning 51-yard field goal attempt with 12 seconds left, but it missed and and the game went to overtime. KC got the ball first, but a Mahomes sack forced them to punt. No worries though, as Davis Mills' draft genes popped up at the worst time, causing him to fumble the ball back to KC deep in Houston territory. Then on the very next play, Jarek McKinnon broke off a 26-yard game-winning touchdown run to seal the win 30-24. KC can get away with sloppy play like this against Houston, but it will eventually fuck them over in the playoffs. Denver versus Arizona. A game between two teams out of the playoffs with Rhett Rippon versus Colt McCoy and Trace McSorley. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to spend much time on this one. Cliff Notes Barry activated. Denver kicked a field goal to go up 3 0. Arizona kicked three field goals in a row to go up 9 to 3 in the third. Denver touchdown to go up 10 9 after three. Denver touchdown made it 17 to 9. Another Denver touchdown made it 24 to 9. An Arizona touchdown made it 24 15 with six minutes left and nobody scored again. Denver wins 24 15. Okay, let's move on to games that matter now. Chargers versus Titans. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. This game was pretty dog shit until the very end. LA started off with a great touchdown drive 
to go up 7-0 after one. A few drives later, Tennessee got on the board to tie the game 7-7 early in the second. Then the Monstars came down from space and took all the offensive talent away from the players. Here's what ensued. LA punt, then a Tennessee punt, then an LA interception, which was admittedly an awesome interception. LA punt, Tennessee punt, LA punt, Tennessee interception, LA interception, Tennessee punt, LA punt, Tennessee missed field goal. Finally, Herbert got LA back on the board with a touchdown drive to go up 14-7 with 10 minutes left. Then it was back to Tennessee punt, LA punt, Tennessee punt, LA punt before Ryan Tannehill finally got his head out of his ass and led a touchdown drive capped off by him sneaking it in from one yard out to tie the game at 14 with 48 seconds left. Then on LA's final drive, Herbert looked like the superstar quarterback we all know resides within him. Throwing several dimes including a 35 yarder on the run to Mike Williams to set up a game winning 48 yard field goal by Cameron Dicker, no offense to incels, to win 17-14. Herbert is now back to a 500 career record. He is 0-5 in games in his career with a chance to have a winning career record. Will he finally do it this time? We'll see. Las Vegas versus New England. The game started off slow, as both teams were deadlocked at three midway through the second quarter until eyeliner enthusiast Derek Carr found Darren Waller for a 25-yard touchdown on second and 20 to go up 10-3. New England's offense continued to do absolutely nothing while a blocked punt helped set up another Vegas touchdown to put them up 17-3 at halftime. Then the game turned. Carr threw a fucking pick six on a screen green pass to make it 17-10. Patriots offense continued to look like an offense with Matt Patricia calling plays, but they hit a couple field goals while the defense forced Vegas to punt on five straight possessions. Finally, New England's offense had a good drive, capped off by a 34-yard touchdown run by Ramondre Stevenson and a two-point conversion to go up 24-17 with 3.43 left. New England got the ball up seven with a chance to ice the game on third and ten, but Mac Jones just slid for zero yards and they punted. On Vegas' final drive, Carr threw up a bunch of bullshit hoping something would land, and it worked, as he found Keelan Cole for a 30-yard touchdown with 32 seconds left to tie the game at 24. Although upon further review, it was obvious Cole was out of bounds and it shouldn't have counted, but then it happened. Around midfield with three seconds left, Stevenson ran around for about 20 yards, then lateraled the ball to Jacoby Myers, who, instead of just going out of bounds and playing for overtime, decided to throw the ball 20 yards backwards to an unathletic fat white quarterback. Only the ball never got there, as Chandler Jones picked it off, proceeded to put Mac Jones into the Earth's crust, and ran it back for the game-winning touchdown. This is obviously part of Belichick's plan. Help your former assistants like Josh McDaniels win so they don't get fired, and wait until their own assistants get head coaching jobs so your coaching tree expands to the point where you secretly control the entire league. You simple fools wouldn't understand a genius like Belichick. Cincy versus Tampa Bay. During the first half of this game, I thought I was in a time machine, as Brady was doing his quick checkdown after checkdown routine that defenses have never been able to stop for some reason. While his own defense was shutting down one of the best offenses in the league to take a 17-3 halftime lead. Then, it was as if I entered the twilight zone. Tampa got stuffed on a fake punt deep in their own territory, leading to a Cincy field goal to make it 17-6. Brady threw a terrible interception, setting up another Cincinnati touchdown to make it 17-12. Then Brady fumbled on a sack, leading to yet another Cincy touchdown and two-point conversion that put Cincy up 20-17. At this point, my underwear was so but it wasn't done yet, as Brady once again fumbled on a handoff, setting up another short field for Cincy, and they capitalized with a touchdown to go up 27-17 early in the fourth. Cincinnati had four straight drives starting inside the Tampa 40-yard line, thanks largely to Tom Dilfer's incompetence. Brady threw a second interception just for shits and giggles, but Cincy didn't score off of it, leaving the door open. But Tampa went three and out and punted. And unlike the Saints, Joe Burrow and the Bengals actually did their fucking job and went on a touchdown drive to put the game away 34-17 with two minutes left. Brady would lead a garbage time touchdown drive to pad his stats and make the final score a more respectable 34-23, but the Bucks lost this game because of Brady, and it was great. However, I can't enjoy this Brady season as much as I want to because somehow, despite getting blown out at home to fall to 6-8, and eight, his playoff chances somehow increase. If he was out of the playoff race like he should be, I would be enjoying this so much more. But I know he'll get into the playoffs, and then a bunch of weird shit will happen to help him win as 
it always does. Prepare your anuses. New Jersey Giants versus Washington. A game between two mediocre teams that came down to the wire but was ultimately a slog to watch. The first quarter saw only a Washington field goal to go up 3-0 before New Jersey scored 14 unanswered points thanks to a strip sack touchdown by overrated rookie Kayvon Thibodeau and a 97-yard touchdown drive to make it 14-3 at halftime. Taylor Heineke found Jahan Dotson for a score to make it 14-9 but the extra point missed. New Jersey added a field goal to go up 17-9 after three. Punts ensued, then Washington cut it to 17-12 on another field goal. On Washington's next drive after getting a stop, Heineke got Washington to the New Jersey five-yard line but was strip-sacked. The Giants then turned that into a field goal to go up eight with two minutes left. Heineke again got Washington on the verge of the end zone, but a controversial flag on Terry McLaurin and a blatant defensive pass interference no call on a fourth down to lose the game ensured a Giants win. Oh, what's that, Washington fans? You got in your fee-fees because the refs fucked you late in a close game? That's karma for ruining the Eagles' perfect season with missed face mask flags and flopping to get a fucking flag on the Eagles' defense. You can eat shit. Green Bay versus the Rams. I was sleeping and didn't watch a minute of this ultimately meaningless game, and it looks like I didn't miss much. Green Bay struck first with a field goal to go up 3-0, but Aaron Rodgers threw yet another what-the-fuck interception that you never see him make before this year that led to a Rams game-tying field goal. Then Rodgers ayahuasca kicked in, and he let a long touchdown drive finished off by an A.J. Dillon touchdown run to go up 10-3. The Rams hit a long field goal to make it 10-6 at halftime, and then, still riding his ayahuasca high, Rodgers led another long touchdown drive with another Dillon touchdown run to make it 17-6. An L.A. punt and a good return set up Green Bay with a short field, which they turned into a third touchdown as Rodgers found Aaron Jones through the air to go up 24-6 late in the third. But Baker refused to quit, roaring right back with a touchdown to make it 24-12 entering the fourth thanks to a missed extra point. Green Bay punted, then Baker got distracted by what he thought was a cheesecake factory in the distance and threw a terrible interception, but Green Bay fumbled the ball right back. However, LA did nothing with it, punting with nine minutes left. Rodgers in the Packers ground game then milked the rest of the clock like a swollen cow udder. Oh yeah, baby, that's a mental image I like. To win and improve to 6-8. and eight. Green Bay and Tampa are both 6-8. and eight. Green Bay beat Tampa head-to-head, but Green Bay has almost zero chance to make the playoffs while Tampa is in line to have a home playoff game. It's just another example of Tom Brady's greatness. Now, I know some of you are probably going to X out of this video now because it's puppy time and you're all miserable people who don't enjoy puppies. Well, guess what? Why don't you stay for once and actually watch puppy time, okay? It'll help you feel better. Believe me. Please, just enjoy the fucking puppies, okay? Let's go. Let's go.